You want the graveyard? We the ones that's gonna supply it. Hard rock, skeleton from men dying. My loyalty was king. Yeah. My lock you couldn't pick it. No. Hold my own, walk the path, yeah. all alone. I'm the difference. A hundred thousand in the wall, I see dead people. I see dead people. Another hundred in the floor, I see fed people. I, fed I come people. from sleeping on the floor, but I still. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lil Brunson back at you with the back at you and I'm the best reporting on the Eagles. So, yes, the snippet you just heard will be it will come out on uh, Friday, April 22nd. Lil Brunson featuring Reed Dallas featuring China BBM. You know, what I'm saying big China. Yeah, man. Cookware, man. It's coming out on all streaming platforms this Friday. A real, real banger, man. You guys really going to enjoy it. If you enjoy Money Block, that's streaming on all platforms. You're definitely going to enjoy Cookware with Reed in China. I'm telling you, man. We was just talking how we supposed to talk. Just, just, just some real Philly stuff going on right now. So, yeah, man. This video was brought to you by Big Manscaped, man. All the products. Lawnmower 4.0s, 3.0s, anything you need. Foot, crop, dusters, everything you need. Use code Brunson, save 20% off, get the free shipping. And the free shipping, I fall for that for y'all. So, yeah, let's jump right into the meat and potatoes, man. You know, this wide receiver debacle that's going on right now with a lot of these star wide receivers wanting a lot of money right now is really, really concerning to me for a multitude of reasons. This really could shape the landscape of how wide receivers are handled for the next three to four years. You know what I'm saying? These guys want top end money right now. These wide receivers, if they show you two good years on a rookie deal, they think that they should get the bag right away and immediately. Some of them deserve the bag right away and immediately. But I feel like this, man. You know what position you was drafted in. If you're still on that rookie deal, finish out your contract, man. Don't try to stranglehold an organization and put him in this situation. Devontae Adams is different. He's been proven for years and years and years. And he was up for a contract extension. It's different. You see what I'm saying? Chris Chris got when had to, played under the franchise tag. You know what I mean? They made sure they set him up with a nice chunk for one good year. Ideally, that's not what these wide receivers want. Ideally, these wide receivers want a multitude of millions of dollars that spreads out across like five years. It's just undoable sometimes. Just because you had two years or a couple years in the league is undoable. I know McLaurin, he should be creeping up on, on the end of his deal, so I understand it. I actually understand it for Debo Samuel as well. I understand it for A.J. Brown. I understand it for these guys. But sometimes just sitting and being patient and having faith that an organization is going to take care of you it can work out in your favor you know what i'm saying the san francisco 49ers do not want to lose debo samuel they don't they, they just don't you know what i mean and i can say the same about aj brown they don't have julio jones over there anymore they're going to take care of you man sometimes you just got to sit back and play the field but bum rushing your organization can have negative effects it can. Like, you could be traded. You could be moved. Now, for instance, say you're traded to a team who was slotted to want one of these wide receivers. This is why the wide receiver pool in this year's draft is very, very, very important. These guys rather get somebody young on a rookie deal than pay some of these guys who will go on the extra mile and deleting franchises from, you know, their social media bios and stuff like that. That could be seen as a distraction. I'm not saying these dudes don't deserve their money. I'm just saying that the way a lot of these guys are going about acquiring said money is it, it's, it's kind of crazy, man. And I can see how if you were owner, how you're not going to let an employee of yours stranglehold you into paying you when he want to be paid. Listen, you know, you own a contract. Perform towards the duration of your contract, then we could talk about this. Sometimes it just gotta go. That's just business. That's just business, man. And these wide receiver contracts that are being given out this year is gonna get crazy for these guys that wanna get paid now. Now, honestly, if you got the money to do it, I would pay one of these guys now if you could, because you could be saving yourself money next year. You don't know where this thing is gonna be at with all these wide receivers, man. These guys are literally ripping the NFL into pieces with how much money they want. You know what I mean? Everybody wants to be paid the best wide receiver right after the next guy. I want more than that guy. I want more than that guy. That's the trend that we're going for now in the NFL, and it can hurt some of these teams in the draft. It's golden for the Philadelphia Eagles. It's golden because we already know we need a wide receiver. We don't have another wide receiver on the roster already throwing a fit. So what does that mean for us? It means that our 15th spot is that much more valuable because teams will say, say, for instance, the 49ers get rid of, you know what I mean, Debo Samuel. Now they need a wide receiver. Being as though they pick after the Philadelphia Eagles 15 to 18, they'd be willing to give up a king's ransom to get one of these wide receivers in this draft if they lost Debo Samuel. Same thing for Washington, most likely. Same thing for Tennessee. Damn sure same thing for Tennessee because Tennessee is on the brink of a championship. You want to keep A.J. Brown. You want to keep A.J. Brown. If you don't keep A.J. Brown, 
Now you might be looking to trade back up and get you another wide receiver as soon as possible. And like I said, that makes our pick that much more valuable. It makes a lot of people's picks that much more valuable. So when things like that happen, you got to be aware of some type of slippage. Guys will slip. So I came to you guys today with my top five guys that the Philadelphia Eagles just simply cannot pass on if they're there at 15. And I'll explain why for each one. Number one, Kayvon Thibodeau. I can see Kayvon Thibodeau slipping in his draft. Wide receivers becoming a hot commodity all out during the NFL. And I can see him slipping down in this draft. I still see Aiden Hutchinson going number one. I still see Kyle Hamilton being like a top three, top four guy. You know what I'm saying? Um, Kayvon Thibodeau could be out on that. Now, Kayvon Thibodeau is number four on the PFF um, big board. I think it's a big 100 board. He's number four. But but listen, wide receiver could become a problem, and guys might be trying to, you know, make something happen. So I can definitely see Kayvon Thibodeau being drafted after four. You know what I mean? But I can see him slipping down a quite bit as well. Um, the next guy would be Trent McDuffie. Trent, Trent McDuffie is rated the number one cornerback. On a few websites, one being the PFF uh, Big Board, he is rated, uh, was no, he wasn't the number one cornerback. He was rated the number two cornerback, uh, the number three defensive back overall. Derek Steenley was rated the number one cornerback. Um, and Trent McDuffie was rated the eighth best guy in this draft, and he was the second best cornerback. Listen, the only thing Trent McDuffie is lacking is size, and the only thing he's lacking is having played against elite level guys, you know what I'm saying, and at the collegiate level. That's the only two things he's lacking. I mean, he's 5'11". He's not the shortest guy on the field, for God's sakes. Very, very close to six feet. Right. But very, very close to six feet. The only thing he's really lacking is size. Um, next, Sauce Gardner. Being as though a lot of people see Trip McDuffie as the second best cornerback and Sauce is the third best cornerback, listen, you can slip down. You know what I mean? So, Sauce, listen, it's self-explanatory. Sauce is everything Trip McDuffie is but at 6'3". So, yeah. Sauce, if Sauce is there at 15, you got to take him. Now, if it's Trent McDuffie and Sauce is there, both at 15, which could very likely happen, I would lean a little more towards Sauce because Sauce is the bigger guy. The reason why Derek Stingley isn't on this list, Derek Stingley is my number one cornerback in this draft, is because I don't think Derek Stingley is going to be there at 15. But Sauce, you got a chance. You got a chance with Sauce. You got a chance with um, McDuffie. And you got a chance with, uh, what's my other guy name? I can't think of his name right now, but he's not on this list anyway. Next up, Trayvon Walker. Self-explanatory. If he's there at 15, you got to take him. Physical specimen. Physical specimen at six foot five, over three hundred pounds, running the way that he runs, and he's the only guy that gives me some sort of a like an Aaron Donald flashback when I look at him because you can line him up all across that defensive line and you can still get the same level of productivity. You can put him on the edge, he can edge rush. You can put him in the middle, he can bull rush. You got to get this guy if he's there at fifteen. You got to. Um, my last guy, Jameson Williams. He's not even my my number one rated. He's not even my number one rated wide receiver. On this list, only because he's in this top five situation, is because he possibly could slip down due to injury. And I just and I and I know Alave Alave will be there. Chris Alave is my number one guy. I know Alave will be there at eighteen. So you can make a lot of you got a lot of wiggle room with that. So if Alave is there at eighteen, you definitely could cheat with one of the guys I listed before. But Jameson Williams, if he's there at fifteen, you really really got to consider it. Now, if all of these guys are there at fifteen, Kayvon Thibodeau. Trent McDuffie, Sauce Gardner, Trayvon Walker, Jameson Williams. If they're all there at 15, something catastrophic happened. Everybody start trading up for quarterbacks. Everybody start taking offensive linemen. It's a bunch of offensive linemen that's good in this draft as well. You know what I mean? But we're not in the business of that. This is why these top five apply to us. Like I said, if all five of these guys are there, I don't know what you do in that situation, to be honest, man. It's, it's just a lot. You really can't go wrong. You really can't go wrong. If you can get Kayvon Thibodeau at 15, you've won. If you can get Sauce Gardner at 15, you've won. Listen, you can't go wrong with none of these guys if you take them there at 15 because you know what you still have? You still have 18 to double back and get whatever you could have got. You know what I'm saying? At 15, if, if, if everything would have panned out the way it did. So the Philadelphia Eagles have options in this year's draft. And Brandon Graham is healthy. Healthy, 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 ready to go for OTAs. And that just means the world for the Philadelphia Eagles. It means the world for me, man. Brandon Graham is one of my favorite Eagles of all time. But Brandon Graham, you know, not being there really, really shed. It, it, it really it really shined an ugly light on the defense and how the defense just wasn't being. It really showed you how important Brandon Graham was 
as a speaker, as his presence, it really showed you, man. You went from being one of those off defensive lines that people got a game plan for to being second to last in sex. You got to get that together. You got to figure that out. I'm so happy that Brandon Graham is back because he'll be able to mentor a guy like Kayvon Thibodeau. He'll be able to help out with anybody. You, you know, you know, Brandon Graham fits into the grand scheme of this defense being great. And that's the bottom line, man. Let me know what y'all think in the comments, man.